Hello, um, and thank you ever so much for inviting me to talk to you today. Um, I wanted to just take a few moments to set the scene a bit, um, talk about sustainable archaeology in a time of crisis um, before you head off into the next three days of thinking about what that might mean in practice. I think we all know that the current crisis for climate, for biodiversity, for well, a lot of things at the minute isn't really looking too great. Um, we have already experienced climate change um, with global temperatures increasing of more than one degree. We're likely to see that exceeding one and a half degrees in our lifetime. We're on track, if you look at this diagram with a red line um, in the, the top there, um, that's what we're on track for. And it's well above where we should be, which is the green line, which is limiting to two degrees or even better, the blue line limiting to one and a half degrees. Um, all these talks of, of, of one and a half degree or two degree worlds um, might seem a little abstract, but the recent IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, drew stark attention to the difference between those two future worlds. With an increase of 1.5 degrees, we lose about 70% of our coral. Um, with a two degree increase, we lose pretty much all of it. It's a difference between 6 million people being affected by sea level rise, 16 million. And these changes are happening rapidly, more rapidly than those experienced by previous people. The biodiversity crisis is also very real. Um, biodiversity is in decline. Our wildlife is in a woeful state and we need to take action really urgently to um, reverse that, to bend the curve, this, this sort of U-shaped curve you can see in the graph up at the top there. And um, climate change is closely related to this. The climate stresses um, on, our, on our species are, are part of that challenge. So we all have a part to play in, in how we respond to these. The crisis is one that is um, pretty unprecedented in its rates of change, um, but also starkly set out in these two charts also taken from the IPCC recent report. The purplish bluish areas show those areas where there is 100% um, risk of, of, of loss of species. That, as you can see, in a four degree world is pretty much all of the equator areas. And similarly, the one at the bottom is about risks to human health. That's showing that continuous risk to human health posed by heat and humidity. So these are big challenges. And as archaeologists within this, we have to ask ourselves, are, are we also facing challenges? The loss of our, of our archaeological sites and deposits? Um, and are we just another one of those diagrams showing more loss and more destruction? Or could we have something else to add, something that might help us play a part in being in being the solution, supporting the solution, how we respond to these? And I've included the catchphrase and climate heritage network there. Anthropogenic problems need human solutions. So I'm going to persuade you that actually, yes, we can play a positive part. It's not just about loss. Um, and I'd like to challenge you to think about that over the next few days. So the actions, the way in which the IPCC is identifying that we should be responding, the real differences, the, the places we get the most bang for your buck are around things like renewable fuel, protecting, restoring ecosystems, sustainable diets, reducing food waste, more efficient buildings and greener and more efficient transport. Now, many of those, although these are from a report looking at global scale, are things that you can implement in your lives and in your work. And some of those might be facilitated or impeded or affected by um, archaeology. So thinking about where archaeology fits in the processes um, of, of delivering some of those solutions is, is important and how we might ultimately help facilitate a move to, to implementing those. And what CIFA are doing about this? Well, there is a CIFA climate uh, change working group of which I'm part. There's quite a number of us here over the next few days. So um, do seek us out, talk to us. And there is an opportunity on Friday to join a session um, where we will explore some of this in a little bit more detail. So do join us there um, in the Royal Suite Friday morning, nice and early. Um, there's some examples of the activities that we've been undertaking 
there, but our remit is to provide advice for CIFA and its members, how to reduce emissions, encourage members to share ideas and case studies, and to seek expertise and examples from outside the profession. That idea of emphasis on sharing and learning from ourselves and from others is pretty important when it comes to responding to this crisis. So we're facing uh, responses to these this biodiversity and climate crisis, which involve changes at an unprecedented scale. We are facing huge changes in the way in which we use our land and our landscapes. Um, restoring natural processes, nature-based solutions, these are common um, terms and, and, and um, phrases that you'll hear about what we need to do in order to address particularly biodiversity crisis and, and provide climate adaptation. Um, we need infrastructure, say sustainable power, better water management and infrastructure and transport. Uh, sustainable transport requires different infrastructure. We need to defend ourselves from um, the impacts of coastal flooding and fluvial flooding, surface water flooding. That requires construction um, of, of those defences. And, and, and um, all of these have an impact on archaeology. Um, and some of them will fall within planning regulatory frameworks, which we might be familiar with, but actually many of them don't. Um, and those frameworks, I think, as well as we all know, are, are founded on that idea of mitigating harm, proportionate and reasonable responses to, to doing so. And, and the idea that the polluter pays, the person doing that harm pays for, for the impact to mitigate that impact in the archaeology. Um, but anthropogenic problems need human solutions. So there are also social um, and human responses to these crises. Um, social, we need changes in, in the way that society is structured, the way that we respond to these things. We need to better understand the climate stories of our places, both past and present and future. We need to contextualise these changes. Can we learn from the long view how we can um, understand how those places have changed over time, what we can learn from that? And might there be culture-based solutions? And where does archaeology fit within those human solutions. More importantly, can we embed that idea of, of sustainability within the way in which we think about the public value of archaeology? So what if archaeology contributes something more than um, addressing that mitigation of harm, it's proactive and facilitated some of this change, engaging people with their environment and being part of those solutions? So. Um, to recap where does archaeology fit in it, it's affected it's affected by the impacts of climate change direct and indirect and by how we respond to those the changes in tree planting and infrastructure peatland restoration all of these things have an impact on our archaeological resource and we're only just beginning to understand the scale of these impacts and develop responses appropriate and reasonable responses which are actually deliverable with the resources that we have as a sector um, including thinking about how we might manage loss. We have a real challenge on our hands in the future as we face sea level rise of more than a metre in many areas by the end of the century. To date, we've only experienced about 11 centimetres um, of rise, with, just to put that in context. Um, so can archaeology be part of that cultural toolkit to respond to this crisis? Can it help contextualize that change. We're very good at thinking at different temporal and spatial scales. We can help tell those climate stories of places. And if you can help people engage with and imagine the past, you can help them visualize the future, empower them to help be part of that, to help um, shape um, new places, sustainable places. We're also very good at remembering things even when they're not there, that Classic essay question, archaeology is destruction, discuss. Um, archaeology destroys, but doesn't mean that we don't have that learning, the engagement that we can um, form, the stories that we can tell from the material that we've excavated and investigated. That's a skill that we can share more widely. Um, we can learn from the past. There's huge amounts of um, knowledge buried in the ground. We can see the long term impacts of the decisions that people made the way in which the environment and people interacted, shaped um, and responded over time, lost knowledge, 
and also better understand past ecosystems and the ecosystem services, the things that the, the environment does to support people and their needs. And perhaps most importantly of all, we can really demonstrate that that division between culture and nature, people and the environment is, is a false one that actually we are very closely connected. Our landscape, our biodiversity is related to what people have been doing for thousands of years in our in our um, places. And, and we can help demonstrate those close connections. Um, and actually the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, chair, Ho Sun Lee, recognised the importance of heritage in responding to climate change when he addressed an expert meeting in December 2021 it was exploring culture, heritage and climate change. Um, and I particularly like these words about the need to um, share that understanding of the past um, in order to support a sustainable and shared future. Um, I want to also just touch briefly on failure. I think it's a much neglected topic, but it's really important when we're talking about addressing the crisis. And I think it's something to bear in mind as we explore what sustainability means um, for archaeology in this in the context of this conference as well. The scale of the challenges we are facing is enormous um, and the scale of the response is enormous. These are novel challenges. No one has addressed these before. Um, if you are feeling comfortable with what needs to be done, with what we're facing, then you may not have fully understood just quite how challenging um, things are and will be. Um, and as you start to engage with these topics, it's hard and we need to be aware, um, very conscious and look after um, our own and others' mental health um, as, as we do this. Um, the uncertainty um, an open endedness of the task in hand of addressing these crises is, is part of that that challenge. There's no plan. No one has the answers yet. We are working on it. Many people are working on it. The, and blazing that trail, although it's scary and overwhelming, if we are able to share not just the successes, not just the things that work, the bright ideas, but also the things that go wrong, um, then we will um, make good progress and create a more sustainable and, and, and valuable um, archaeological sector um, and process for the future. We're going to make those mistakes, um, but creating a culture in which we can share and understand and learn from not just our own mistakes, but those of others, I think could be a really powerful place to be. Um, and finally, people are at the heart of, of heritage and, and remembering that and looking after people and the way that we engage and include them in heritage is really important. And finally, um, I was asked to reflect a little on, on the blurb for the, the conference and in um, particular this bit around our profession's future being sustainable only if archaeologists continue to provide relevant, effective, creative and very visible service to the public. I've added that word relevant in there. I think that's really critical. I think we have a lot going on that we have to be able to proactively respond and engage with. We can't passively um, respond to harm and threat um, and mitigate that harm. Um, we have to be a bit more proactive. We have to find ways to be part of those solutions. Otherwise, we're going to get left behind. Um, so a conference challenge. I believe that each one of us has, as archaeologists, have skills, superpowers, um, however you want to phrase it, that we have as archaeologists from our own perspective, from our own experiences, our own expertise that are relevant, that can help support sustainability, reduce emissions or support nature recovery. And I want you to think about what your skills are. What do you bring and how you might use them better? and find one thing that you can do to help support that sustainability, reduce emissions and support nature recovery. And I don't want you to keep it to yourself. I want you to share it, talk to others about it, commit to it, find ways of sharing the experiences 
that you have as you try and implement that skill after you leave the conference. So what will you do? Thank you.